This is Shamini Jan with the Consciousness and Healing Initiative, www.chi.is, and I have the great pleasure of sitting with some of the most amazing scientists at the Institute of Noetic Sciences, Helane Wabe and Arno Delorme. And they are doing cutting edge research in mediumship and channeling. And I wanted uh, them to have the opportunity to share that stuff with you because it's just amazing work. Um, thank you both for agreeing to do this. I really appreciate it. So, IONS has been a pioneer of leading edge research and consciousness for almost 50 years now and um, it's really incredible what they've been doing so these two young amazing scientists have been doing work in channeling most recently and mediumship and I guess my first question for both of you is um, what do you mean by channeling what do you mean by mediumship what is what does that mean and what is the difference between them sure so the broadest term um, channeling refers to being able to access information and energy from beyond time and space so essentially getting information and energy from beyond our traditional five senses mm -hmm. and so under that umbrella you have lots of different terms like full trance channeling which would mean that the channeler believes that they move out of the way for a purported disincarnate being to come into their body okay. and use their body to communicate. Wow. Most people refer to mediumship when they are receiving information and energy mentally, so it's coming in through their mind and they aren't necessarily using their body in any way, and Arno can speak to that a little bit more, but it mm -hmm. usually is referring to communicating with um, who they believe are deceased humans. Okay, so mediumship encompasses a lot of different things, but essentially it's different from channeling in the way that you've described it, because um, in channeling you sort of have a full embodied experience of a being coming through your body. Is that right? Trance channeling. In trance channeling. Yeah, but okay. you could call mediumship a type of channeling. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah. yeah. Arno, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think it's a good description that you have the uh, people who can channel, so it just the voice of the uh, purported spirit goes through their, their mouth, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, people who claim to have the information coming to their mind and they just repeat it, so it's more passive mm -hmm. mediumship, Maybe we call it mental mediumship versus channel. Mental mediumship, and so as I understand it, both of you have been doing research in trans channeling and in mediumship. Before we get into that though, just a basic question that I think a lot of people who are not real familiar with this would ask, which is, um, why would someone do this? You know, so why, why would you want to, as a trans channel, or have someone come into your body and do this? And, and how common is this anyway? I mean, so we just finished a study actually looking at how common channeling is and there's such a wide variation of channeling from simple intuition that almost all of us have experienced on some level um, to the other extreme which is trans channeling so trans channeling itself is not that common it is pretty rare to mm -hmm. step aside and have a purported being come work through your body but intuition mm -hmm. happens to most people almost every day mm -hmm. so we did a study looking at 25 different channeling experiences and found that the percentages of the general population scientists and engineers and um, people who are interested in this stuff was quite high almost in the 90s Wow. I know. In the 90s, 90%? 90 you mean yes, of 90 of those people some yes. kind of an, an experience with what you call channeling, which isn't necessarily just trans-channeling, but getting information, getting what we call intuition? Right. Yeah? Yes. And wow. so when you take out the most common ones, like perhaps feeling somebody else's emotion or getting a gut hunch about something uh, about what the next step should be, mm -hmm. that number stated about 80% of those three groups had wow. had at least one of those channeling experiences. So this is actually a study that you did that's going to be published, right? It'll be published, yeah. yes, in the next that's couple great. months. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, we'll look forward to sharing that. That's, a, that's amazing. And uh, you've been engaging in some other research with trans channels as well, right? So we just completed a in-laboratory study with trans channels where we hooked them up to 
um, electrodes that measured their brain, their heart, their skin, a variety of different um, physiological measures. And to see how those changed from when they were channeling to when they were not channeling and see mm -hmm. the differences between those. So we can um, perhaps get a little bit about how channeling works. Wow. Wow, amazing. So you're really getting a sense of um, what's happening physiologically with a trance channeler when they're actually in the channeling process versus when I think your control condition is like reading, right? Reading right, out they're loud just sitting there And sitting silently. Great. And back to your question about why um, someone would want to do this, like especially with the trance channeling, most of them experience it as a pleasurable experience so they they have some immediate positive benefit from it just in their body they're more relaxed they feel at peace they feel calm and um, the perception is that they really are receiving information that supports them in their personal life supports humanity and gives um, perhaps a sense of comfort and information about where they're going and what their next steps should be. Mm -hmm. The impact of channeling through the survey that we did was also very, very positive. That most channeling experiences, um, people have a positive impact from it. Mm -hmm. So they feel like it's really a, a, a beneficial thing and would you call it, uh, you know, some people think of channeling as an aspect of spiritual development. Um, so, and what I yes. hear you saying is kind of, uh, there is a sense of peace and uh, a sense of well-being and a deeper sense of knowing mm -hmm. that can come with these experiences. Yes. Yeah? That's, uh, that's wonderful. And we really look forward to hearing more about uh, the research, the laboratory research as well. Mm -hmm. And Arno, I know that you have been doing a lot of research in mental, what's called mental mediumship, right? Um, for several years now, funded research um, at the Institute of Noetic Sciences. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested in the non-local consciousness. Is the consciousness in the brain or not? And so mental mediumship was like an ideal, uh, ideal application because people claim to have information they're not supposed to have, so it's relatively easy to test. Mm -hmm. And so in the lab, what we do is we have a medium come and they see picture on the computer screen and they have to say they have to give information about these pictures and then we check whether the information is true mm -hmm. or not so we can check their, uh, their accuracy on large number of uh, pictures and do statistics. So you basically have um, pictures that are being shown to people. Tell us a little bit more about that. How does that so work? The pictures we have is uh, so um, Usually when you go see a medium, you bring a, a photograph of somebody. So mm -hmm. that's what we show them. We show them photographs of faces uh -huh. and we ask them information about these people. And usually they only have uh, uh, two or three buttons depending on the experiment. Where uh, one question we were asking in the previous experiment is, are these people alive or not? Just very simple binary, yes or no, or oh. I don't know. Interesting. And okay. in the new one, uh, we're asking them, how did these people uh, pass? So information, uh, was it cancer? Wow, was so that's pretty specific shot? information that you're asking mm -hmm. here. Yes, yeah. and, and, and because we're showing so many pictures, we, we can get uh, high statistical power. Mm -hmm. So if we find something, sure. we can be pretty sure this is accurate and this is not due to chance. And has any of your work also published at this point? Yes, we've published the, the paper on the, uh, on the face, which are alive or, or, or not. Great. And we're working on the on the new experiments on the cause of uh, mm. death. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you both for your work. As you know, this is not common research in the universities. Although um, both of these individuals, um, you know, come from university settings and have their university affiliations, but it's really organizations like the Institute of Noetic Sciences that allow scientists the freedom to explore these deeper questions around consciousness. Um, where can people go to learn more about you and your, your work? www.noetic.org N-O-E-T-I-C dot org Okay, great. Well, thank you both so much for doing this you, and Charmaine. good luck with your thank you. research. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.